By the way, hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That is Dan. We welcome yep. back to the studio. First time in a minute. Matt Bennett. Hey. It's been too long. Matt Bennett. I, I will say I was uh, the most recent one was the Dynasty interview where oh. I just crashed it and sat in the back. You had quite but, the cameo. Yeah, I think that the last time I actually talked to you was like 2015, 2016, like here on the couch. No. Yeah, for um for the album I put out for Terminal yeah, the, Cases, the concept album. Yeah, the concept album. Wait, that's the last time we talked to Matt Bennett. No, right? kind of. And then I did the Liz Gillies. Yeah. I sat yes. on the couch with my my three blind mice glasses. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was iconic. Are we allowed to say things like Goom Radio on this, oh, or is of that okay? Cool. Yeah. O okay, Goomer. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> totally. Before Zach was at Amazon, he was at somewhere else. Wait, and then I was somewhere else, and then I was at Goom Radio. Goom Radio was the original. Yeah. Were you there for? You were there. No, I was not a Goom. Okay. I started after Goom. I did. I did one Goom. Yeah, it was iconic. I did one. Just Zach sang in the gang. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you've done a Zach sang <laughs> show. Yeah. And now you do your own. Well, you did a Zach sang in the gang. You did a Zach sang show. And now you do a Zach sang show again. Cool. It's an Full honor circle. to have you. Yeah, Can't we, wait for you to go back to Goom. Yeah, Those too. are the days. <laughs> it is really crazy, though, to think about, uh, I don't know, there's been a lot of life that's lived, and there's been a lot of time that's passed. And Tell me about it. Yeah, you now operate a brand that capitalizes on yesterday. A little bit. You know, I, I say this sometimes on stage. I don't like the term uh, nostalgia. You know, it is it it means like a bittersweet longing for things past from doing from starting DJing and doing Party 101. I partied last year. Um, this is not the past. It's very much the present. People are people want to engage with this content now. It's not like, we're, you know, I don't I didn't have to force them to do it. People were like, no, this is this means something to me. So, it yeah, this is stuff that came out a while ago. But if you contextualize it differently you can really tell a story that feels very current and feels very now. Do you learn new things about the works you've created and put out into the world from doing parties like this? All the time. Every single day. It's, you know, people ask if I get tired of playing the same types of songs every night. It's like, no, because the crowd is different. And I go and I talk to them after the show. And it's everything that I believed to be true, I now know to be true. You know, um, mostly just that we're not all that different. We're all, we all have the same interests, the same wants, the same desires. And, you know, we, I, I started this in you know, a club of like 300 people and now we're doing thousands of people a weekend. And it's, it's just so, um, it's meaningful. It's impactful. And people sometimes, people leave happy, people leave in tears. It's just, it's a, it's a whole onslaught. So basically what I do, I do this DJ night. It's called Party 101. People don't know what I'm talking about. No, they do. Um, where we, we do three to four hours of just hardcore 2010s on content, you and know, with an emphasis on the Nickelodeon and Disney of it all. It's everything you loved during the prime of our lives. And, and it's, you know, it's really, I feel like it's impactful in a way. You know, if this, if it mean, if this type of thing means something to you, you're going to get a lot out of it because it's a lot, you know, there's a lot of ground to cover and there's still stuff that I haven't explored. So that's sort of the new run uh, we're calling party one one legends. And I haven't really explained exactly what it's going to be, but, um, I was listening to, uh, Justin Bieber, early Justin Bieber. And he's not somebody that I really have a lot of his music. Are you talking in like my set. one less lonely one girl? Time, one time. One time. Okay. That was the song that kind of, I was like, this is that sound. I remember I went, the first premiere I ever went to was Schoolgirls. Do you remember that? Were you there for that too? Yeah. And that, wasn't that like a Nick Cannon movie? Yes. A Nickelodeon movie. And Justin Bieber had a cameo. Justin Bieber had a cameo. He was at the premiere and it was at the height. It was like Baby had just come out and he was getting chased around. It was at a uh, um, Magic Mountain, Six Flags. He was getting chased around. And I was listening to one time, I'm like, there's that sound. I forgot, like it, it felt at the time, it felt like nothing, but it's like, that's 2009 right mm -hmm. there. And I'm like, I wish I could tell a story, but like from where Justin Bieber started to where he is now. So I came up with the idea. It was originally going to be called Matt Bennett's Eras Tour. And we got really <laughs> far. We had, uh, we had mock-ups of all the designs and then Live Nation's like, oh, are you kidding me? No, <laughs> you can't, you can't get Eras Tour. So we're calling it the Legends Tour. And what I want to do is showcase different artists from where they started to where they are now. Tell the legend of Justin Bieber. So start with One Time, which was his first single, and kind of through music lead up to Yummy and Peaches. Um, I was a huge Hannah Montana fan. So I want to start 
with Best of Both Worlds and bring you up to flowers. And this is, it's that. not going to be the full show. This is just like 10 to 15 minutes where I can be like, tonight is a Justin Bieber Miley night. You know, and you won't know until you show up who you're going to, what you're going to get. You're still going to get the hits. You're going to get the Victoria songs, the big, you know, like this is me from Camp Rock. But just to keep it fresh, keep people on their toes, it's like, let's go. Let's let's revisit how we got to where we are now. Let's tell the legend of these people. I love it. By the way, you we'll got to go. It, it might work. It might not. No, who knows? Please. We'll see. But, but in these moments, you got to do it to see if it works because you can talk about it all fucking day. Mm -hmm. You can't really sketch it out. You just got to do it and see if it plays with the crowd. See what songs work too. Yeah. Like one time to me is that it's that ultimate sound. But people may be like, I don't know. I talked to people who were like, I was four when the show, when Victorious came out. I was five when Victorious came out. Now they're adults. Yeah. You're just like, oh my God, this is so scary. So you don't know what's going to resonate. It's, it's surprising. Sometimes, like, um, they don't know Hillary Duff. The audience really seems to be split. They know what dreams are made of, but less so like coming clean uh. or uh, so yesterday. So you're, I'm, I always try and figure out where is that cutoff? Where is that divide? Well, isn't that the difference between like mainstream and being a fan of somebody? Because like you can be younger and still touch things that Hilary Duff or Lizzie McGuire has done as it progresses. But you're not necessarily getting come clean or so yesterday in the work, but you're getting... This is what dreams are made of because you're still touching that movie. It is and really it was big on TikTok. That yeah, was a big, big song on TikTok. I feel the other thing is choruses sometimes. This is just the job of the DJ. Do you need to take a second to? No, I just, you drop? No, I dropped my, my drink. Mm, my energy. Beverage. Another one. I just drop, uh, all I do is fucking drop them. Um, that's, it, it is really interesting because you are talking to a really large crowd, right? Like you could be talking to people our age, mm -hmm. right? 30s. But you really could be talking to somebody who's, 19, 20, 21, 22. Our you shows do, are 18 and up. That's so. fucking great. Yeah. But that's a huge gap. So how do you find those touch points that everybody understands? Um, I, I just, I lived through it. You know, like there was a moment that happened from like 2006 to about 2012 or 13 that I was just, it started with High School Musical. That came out when I was in ninth grade. I remember it swept the high school. And then it was like a one-two punch. It was that and Hannah Montana. And I was just, I was the perfect age for that to hit really hard. And it kind of carried through, through Victorious and through Big Time Rush. And then we saw a real splintering of people's interests, of where people's attention spans were. I remember Twitter was brand new when I started on Victorious. There was no Instagram. There was definitely no TikTok. There was no Vine. There was no Snapchat. And we watched people slowly, you know, adopt these new and there's no streaming either. There was no Netflix. Netflix was in the uh, DVD business. I remember I used to get auditions for Netflix shows, and I'd be like, the DVD company? <laughs> like, hard pass. And I would look back and I'd go, what were you thinking? <laughs> no. You could have been on, I don't know, House of Cards, Stranger Things. It was one of those types of shows. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we were the last show or one of the last, uh, you know, eras of shows where everybody was watching the same channels and now people's attention spans are just scattered. I was on a plane the other day flying to a gig and there was a girl sitting next to me and she was on TikTok. I'm like, I wonder what her feed looks like. Cause uh, mine is all record collecting guitars, DJ equipment, uh, video games, music, whatever. So I'm looking over and it's all get ready with me. Her, her feed is all get ready with me. It's hair tutorials, makeup tutorials, nail tutorials. See, okay, I'll, I'll be honest. I was looking because I was like, maybe she's going to get an ad for Party 101 while she's sitting next to me and I can just be like, hey, come come see the show. Um, but yeah, like we all are getting fed so many different things. This show works because it's the last that we all oh. kind of were watching the same shows, watching the same movies, engaging with the same content in the, at the same time. That's the other thing. Now, a, you know, a series of Stranger Things gets dropped, 18 episodes or whatever, however many, in one day. And it's it's almost like a chore. How many times have you had the conversation with somebody? You know, have you watched the new season of whatever it is, of uh, Ted Lasso? No, I know I have to, you know. I feel like, I, I no, I will, I'll get, it feels like a chore. This was, you know, when you had nothing better to do but sit home and just like, man, Selena Gomez is so dreamy. You know, it was those <laughs> days. And we can kind of we kind of harken back to it. And it's it's just a party. It just feels good. By the way, get tickets. We're going to put a link in the description below. Obviously, it's there for you. And I'm coming to a city near you. That's the other, I love to travel. I love going to I'm going to Milwaukee. What's in Milwaukee? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm going to find out.
But I'm going to see. You now literally travel everywhere. You go to Hawaii. Yeah. Nobody goes I, to Hawaii on tour. I did. I did that a couple of weeks ago. And then I had two weeks off, and then I did UK and Europe. So we did uh, London, Manchester, Glasgow, um, Brussels. And then I had three days off in Paris, and then Paris and Milan. So it's just... Who knew, man? <laughs> Especially for this to happen immediately post a pandemic. You know, I I live in a small one bedroom apartment. All of a sudden just be like, nope, here's the world. It was just, it's, it's not lost on me how special, how lucky I am to be doing this. And I talk about it on stage. And you do it all alone, right? You just travel by yourself? Uh, I have an opening act and I have a tour manager, but you know, it's, it's DJing. So it's, <laughs> we rent the CDJs. I just have my laptop and uh, yeah. It's pretty, uh, we're pretty tight crew, pretty, <laughs> very, but, very small crew. But does that make, uh, does it get sad traveling and doing these things alone? Um, sad? No, Lonely? no, it's no. Cause it's a, it's fun. It's a job. And yeah, I guess at the end of the night, that was when you would maybe get sad, but, or lonely, but I also, I just crash. And then we have another show the next day and then I get to come back. You know, that's, I do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we do three shows a week for the most part. And then I get to come back to Los Angeles and be a semi-normal guy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and just go back into my routine, go grocery shopping, go to the record store, go to the coffee shop. Is there a part of you that's thinking like, when does this go away? Or do you course, think this can yes. last forever? <laughs> um, Every single time I'm like, well, this can't get bigger. They're like, you're going to Paris. And I'm like, all right, sure. You're going to Milan. Wonderful. Um. The big one, December 1st, we're playing the Palladium. Holy shit. Huge. I'm like, wait, oh, wait, wait. Hold you got to come. Both of you got to yeah, come. Yeah, absolutely. Duh. Wait, what? Yes. That was like 4,000 plus people. Yes, it is. Matt, and what? I go, <laughs> yes. I go, are you sure? Are you sure that we, we can do this? And I'm like, sure. So we're going to make it, I think it's going to be prom, prom 101, or oh. prom, which is a victorious reference. Yeah. We're still working on it because it's December. And right now it's what, the beginning of August? But yeah, but that's a huge show. Yeah, I don't know if it's a beginning or an end, but it's something. So I, I just, I'm, I feel very honored that they trust me with that video because I've seen big bands go through there. I remember when uh, Tyler the Creator first started, he played the Palladium. I've seen, um, saw the replacements. I saw Ween. We did a the Halo Awards there, and it's, and it is. <laughs> we did the Halo. Awards. It is right across the street from Nick on Sunset, where well, we shot Victorious. So I just go. Uh, it gives me goosebumps. And by the way, yeah, I, me I, too. How many times have I driven past that just in the last few days? And I tell people that was one of the most iconic sound stages to shape a whole generation's mindset. You know, and I, now it's an apartment complex. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Amen. It was a really beautiful environment it was a beautiful oh, space beautiful. wonderful location and um yeah i i really hope to do it justice when i play across the street from there that's amazing i i don't i can't believe it i can't believe it's my life I'm very I have, very lucky i have so many memories being flooded into my brain from nick on sunset share i miss one, that place and i mean like just I, re I remember going there for the very first time and i walked through the main entrance which a lot of people don't usually do and it looks like a movie theater in there and it would house uh just different props from Drake and Josh and mm -hmm. all the shows, and it had the fucking vest from the movie theater, and it's and it's a famous location. It's where they first performed Hair, the musical. It's crazy. So they have not just the you know the Nickelodeon memorabilia, yeah. but old hippie stuff too. <laughs> it was a really so I think that part of the building is open because it's historically significant, but the rest has been turned into apartment complexes. It's, and that was no one would go through that main entrance because it was like literally just for I guess like I don't know I would I only went in that one entr entrance once. Mm -hmm. And I, from that that moment on, I would spend dozens and dozens of days there. I'd go through the, you'd go kind of through the side. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Was, was your first time there for iCarly or for Victoria? I went for iCarly. For first. iCarly, yeah. And then was the first time we interacted the go karts in New Jersey? Was that? Yeah, yeah, Where's yeah. Where's that yeah. footage? I we have it somewhere. There's photos of it. Yeah, I have the photos, but I don't. I don't know what. It, what they used the, any of that footage for. No, was it on Nickelodeon? Was it on no, your it, show? It or? went in a magazine spread. And then we did okay. an interview that day that ended up on our show. Okay. By the way, Matt's referencing a time. So when Victoria's first comes out, before, Ari comes on the show, Liz comes on the show, Victoria comes on the show, and then everybody's coming to do like a promo trip to New York. And I, I hear from J14 Magazine, because this is like when, this is at the the end of the reign of the teen magazine. Mm -hmm. Like, what it meant to get a poster. Like, 
kids were going to Barnes and Noble and the grocery stores, and so they were for, grabbing this for, shit. For the younger generation, magazines were <laughs> um, <laughs> books, but slimmer, and they came out once a month, and uh, you'd get a picture of me in it. <laughs> so, uh, or it, it was. Yeah, it's it was really, and I, I can't stress enough. Like the we were the last generation. I, I yeah. challenge people sometimes. I go, I can't even think of one. What was the last successful sitcom? That's no, been a minute. I can't Big think. Guy. I mean, but like, was there? There wasn't a single one from the 2010s. That wasn't maybe a reboot, like Fuller House. It was like Big Bang and How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, I can't think of another multicam sitcom for, that ha- hasn't been like that 90s show or Fuller House or some type of just reboot of it. So there was. We, we, how I Met Your re- Mother? How I Met Your or How I Met Your Father is a reboot. Oh, but yeah, right. like How I Met Your Mother came out in the late two thousands, I think. Mm. So that yeah, it was like yeah, it was the last of a generation. We were the last to be featured in the magazines that came out all the time. <laughs> but it was this shift, right? It was this shift from paper to digital, and some brands were riding both sides, knowing that eventually one was going to have to surpass the other. And for this. You guys are coming to town for a promo trip, and I remember Nick PR like hitting both the magazine up and us up, and I was like, "Let's just do something fun." And I had formed a relationship at the time, like with Liz and Ari, and I was like, "Let's just like do something different." And there was this go kart track that had just opened up right up the street from our studio, and I was like, "Fuck, let me see if I can get them there." And uh, long story short, I did, and we did a whole fucking race go karts, and it, it there was what, a spread in the magazine. There was like what a, a breath spread. of fresh air too. Yeah. Like, thank you for doing something fun with us. A lot of times they would just sit us in a in a cold conference room and be like, "So what can we expect from the new season?" Well, it's gonna be a lot of laughs. It's gonna be a lot of jokes. Uh, Tori may get into some trouble. It was just like the most canned thing yeah. that we could do. So it's like, hey, we're gonna go go karting. Wonderful. Yeah, it was fun. Like I had my like weird random co-host stationed around doing coverage of the race. It was like weird. Plus, we know. were also. I mean, we're now. <laughs> Elder statesman, but at the time we were 16. 17, 18, 19, something like that. Young, young, super young, dude. Like, it, I, I, yeah, I had to have been 16, 17. Yeah. What a cool, what a yeah. cool time and a cool environment. No, like, I, I think about it a lot because for the job that I'm doing now, I have to use all of the skills that I've yeah. ever picked up. You know, I have to, it's performing. I have to, I have to be a businessman. I have to manage things. I have employees for the first time. So it's a lot of, I think back on how I, watched Nickelodeon executives do their business or re- honestly like biggest influence was Ariana yeah, because no, watching that watching time. that you know that uh that rocket ship go off into the stars and how people conducted themselves how they do their business it's a it, you know I didn't realize I was that much of a sponge but you know now I'm like okay I can use all of that stuff that I just was in the room for all of the weird meetings that I was just you know Shouldn't have been privy to, but I was. But that's the best school, and I do say that all the time. Like, you can't, you can't, nobody can teach anything that you've gone through, mm-hmm. even the memories that we share together, right? Both yep. work and play, a ton of them. We've had some crazy times. Insane, but, like, all centered around huge moments that, like, had huge responsibilities attached to it. We met Bernie Sanders. We met Bernie Sanders <laughs> together. We, met, we have a picture with Bernie <laughs> Sanders together. <laughs> But I remember going through Washington, D.C. with you. Yeah. Oh, uh, Worldwide Day of Play? Worldwide Day of Play. And they must have put, I mean, again, like, this is, like, the last of somebody going, let's spend $20, $30 million on something. Let's make sure we have the front lawn to the White House and Michelle Obama and Sasha Malia show up. And, like, it was this, they rented out the W Hotel in the middle of D.C. for a week and a half. Yeah. It was, like, the craziest thing I'd ever fucking seen. And I, there's so many, like, as I sit here and I look you in the eye, I'm thinking to myself, like, there's so many. And then to see it on stage come yeah. to life in this new way that, yes, like, this is very present. It's a show for today. But but genuinely, like, there's a part of your brain that goes back. But that, people need that. Like, people it's, need that. It is a celebration of just how far we've all come. Because it's, that's, and that's the... I don't want to give away. I do. I do a little monologue at the end of every show. Um, I don't want to give away the new monologue, but you know, I'm gonna. I'm telling like the legend of, let's say, Justin Bieber, the legend of Miley Cyrus, and then I'm gonna tell a little bit about the legend of Matt Bennett, which is secretly all of our stories. This is all, all of our stories. Taylor Swift is the only one who had eras. You did, and you did. Everybody did. And I, it, what I'm gonna get at with my show is like, look around. I, I let's say Palladium's 3,800 people. You're not alone. There's, in this city alone, at least 3,799 people 
just like you with the sim- with similar interests. You might feel alone. You might feel ostracized. You might feel like we're all, you know, m- this country's moving apart. And yet we can all get together and dance to some Hannah Montana, dance to some High School Musical. And I think that by focusing on these shared interests, these common, you know, the common denominators that we all have, I think it's good. It's That's what's really fun about getting to travel and do this show. It's I'm happy that post-pandemic, I can go out and do something positive. You know, I don't try and, I don't try and, you know, court controversy or anything. I just want to up, be uplifting. That's, that's, and then I get to do it. And you're doing it, Maddie B. When I went to the show in Atlanta, I was out there grilling dozens of people in the audience, mm-hmm. just wanting to understand them and get to know them. And it's, you've captured something real. Yeah. And it's, you know, once again, I make it real easy for you. I'll come to your town. Yeah, like you I'm going, up. I'm so excited. I'm going, uh, we're starting in San Jose. <laughs> we're doing like a one-off just so I can test out some stuff. When do you start? And, uh, the 10th, August 10th. Cool. And then the full run starts August 17th. And we're going to, I'll come to your town, request it. I'll be there. I, I'm, I, I really enjoy this. I enjoy getting to perform. I enjoy getting to travel. I enjoy getting to talk to the people. Cause that's the, the other thing is like, I look out and I, especially after the show, I talk to people and these are my people. And I don't mean my fans. I mean, like I see a part of myself in them and they see something in me. And it's just this, I, I I always thought that Robbie, the character I played, was unlikable and unsympathetic. Um, I thought he was a weirdo. I thought he was strange. I liked playing him, but I was like, I think this guy is a little bit too specific. But I talk to people and they go, no, no, I I see myself in that character. No, I see a little bit of myself in you and vice versa. And it's been, that's been just insane. How special is that? Yeah. I mean, most people, you know that the audience is there. You know, you can look online and be like, I have a million followers more on Instagram, but you don't meet them. You know, I, the last 10 years post victorious, um, I was just like a normal guy in Hollywood. Yeah. I was on a TV show, but everyone was on a TV show. You know, it's Los Angeles. The second that you go out though, people are just like, I want you to know that, you know, your show meant this to me. It's like the Truman show. You ever watch, see the Truman show? Not really. Oh, so they they do this thing where they, they show people watching the Truman Show, and it's like a guy in a bathtub. It's like people wa- with hugging a pillow while falling asleep to it. There's a bar dedicated to it. I know that our show was broadcast into millions of households around the world. We that's it kind of separates us a little bit from like the Tom Cruises of the world because they seem larger than life. They're on a big movie screen. We were in their house. Yeah, it's accessible. We were yeah in their living room. We're part of the family, and it's just cool to get to engage with people and be like. Your show showcase, you know, soundtracked the high points of my life. Sometimes they say the low points. Like I watched it with a, you know, my brother who was sick. I watched it with my mom and my dad. Or, you know, I watched it when they were fighting in the other room. But hearing that, right, and hearing those moments and what the show really means, is it, post-Victorious was hard. It was hard for a lot of people. It and fucking sucked. It, you know, I, there's no right or wrong. There's no fair in the industry. It's, I, I don't, I, I appreciate the time that I had on Victorious and post, it was very hard. I, I had a lot of trouble finding work. And that's just that's just how it goes. It's it's a business. It's an industry. But does hearing what that show means to so many soften the blow or, I don't know, give maybe reason to the pain or justify the fucking years it took to even get what you're doing now going? Because you found this by chance. Yeah, that's the, I, I try not to toot my own horn. But if I can just do, say it once, nobody told me to do this. I just thought this would be fun. You know, I went out to a a night that played mostly pop music. It was called Candy Pop at the Satellite, which is now closed. And they were doing like Britney Spears. You know, um, they were doing Backstreet Boys and Sync. But they played a Hilary Duff song. They played Coming Clean. And it it worked. People, People liked it there. And I was like, okay, if we can play that type of thing, I want to go and do Hannah Montana. So I asked them, I said, can I come and do the next show? And they said, yes. So I went in, I I played a couple like Stronger by Britney Spears. I played some NSYNC. The second I went into Best Friend's Brother (laughs) from the Victorious cast, (laughs) the roof blew off the place. And I go, aha, that's interesting. And I played GNO from Hannah Montana. And I jumped into the crowd and I was like, there's something here. And then the pandemic hit. So yeah, you know, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it softens the blow a little bit. It makes me feel good that I did something 
that now I like I didn't have my finger on the pulse of like what exactly the influence was. I just knew that it was popular. You know, I knew people watched it. I know on TikTok it would get billions of views. Victorious, the hashtag would get billions of views. But I didn't know how to engage with it on a level like this, where it's almost personal. I get to, I, you know, it's me out there talking to people in real time, in real life. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. Oh, it's I'm, really special. I don't do a lot of interviews. I'm not very good at talking. No, I think okay. you're very good at talking. Merci beaucoup. Oh, wow. Like, I just feel like we're catching up. Yeah, that, that too. Yeah. Good it's, to see it's hard to like <laughs> there's so many it's great to see you and there's so many emotions like you said like we th I think back it's I've known you for 13 years something yeah, and like it's that. not like I don't see you like we do talk of like course. you know we're like yeah you came to my birthday dinner yeah so, but sadly the last time I saw you but you've been traveling a lot yeah I've been, I've been on the road I feel like we talked after that like pretty extensive we, we text yeah yeah I remember talking to you for like an hour one day maybe a little longer but that made like I have poor perception of time, but every time I do talk to you and look at you, I get, I do get flooded with memories because, you know, my high school, like my high school years, the same way with you and like Ari and Liz, like you guys are my friends, you know, I didn't really have friends at normal high school or like yeah. normal life. Like you guys are we, people friends. in high school. You're, you're forced together with the people. And yeah. the only criteria is you live in the same neighborhood. 100%. Like that's, it was cool. <laughs> I was always pursuing acting or, it, you know, I started around 13 or 14 uh, and it, it was important to find a community. And that's another thing I think is important. You know, DJing, um, uh, community theater, whatever it takes to start building a community of your own. You know, I, I think post-pandemic live theater or just going out to a concert is so important. Especially like this, there was a generation that got robbed of two years of their lives because of the pandemic. And to be able to now go out and celebrate, you know, how th through this show, whether it be this show or another DJ night or just a concert, I think it's great and it's so healthy. Like, I love watching what Taylor Swift is doing because she's, every place that she goes, this is, you know, c covered widely, is a big boon <laughs> to the local economy. This helps, this type of thing. Going out and supporting artists that you like, going out, building a community of your own, starting a band of your own, DJing on your own. It's The time is now. And it's I'm, just, I'm happy that I get to do that and hopefully inspire people to also do it. Buy tickets. Buy them. Link in the description below. Are you working on special guests for this next run? The I, I've invited everyone. I've invited <laughs> I know there's, everyone. I know there's a Victoria's group chat. Yeah, we'll... We'll see how it goes. I'll, you know, we're still a couple of weeks away, but everyone has now been invited. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll be. We'll, we'll show up. But you please know, do. Not, I mean, that's the other. You you came out in Georgia, <laughs> yeah. and people were like Zach sang. So they, people like, were very surprised I had legs. Oh, that yeah. was the most popular. Color. What are you wearing on your feet, on your feet right uh, now? My Birkenstocks. These Birkenstocks. Birkenclogs. Oh yeah. Yeah, Boston's. I love those. You have hair. Uh, I'll, I'll, I have the normal sandals. I'll send you a pair of these. Oh, so you got a hookup at Birkenstock? The Birkenstock company? I mean... What are you writing? I'm making a... Ten and a half. To my Eleven. <laughs> to my assistant to send you Birkenstocks. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> send a gift. Love it. Dan, how are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> nice. I'm just enjoying this little catch-up between you guys. Well, and guys. you too. You've been there for a lot of this. I've been there for a lot of it, but you guys have the whole Nickelodeon thing, so you guys really went through that together. Uh, so it's, it's nice just kind of living yeah. through it. Yeah, I've known you like 13 years now. Four, yeah. 13, right? So. Victorious started 2009. Yeah. And the first episode was 2010. Were you, yeah. And you were at the Kids' Choice Awards probably 2010. 2009, actually. 2009. Yeah. And then I, I don't host the pre-show and take part in the actual award show on Nickelodeon until 2012. And I joined the network in 2011. And I'm there till 2013. What was the game show again that you... That or this. That uh, or this. That was a pilot I did. And then I did a clip show for them. And then the show that I did consistently was called Nick's Orange Carpet. Um, and then I did all the Nick.com stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I did three pilots for them. I really do appreciate, especially in hindsight, Nickelodeon owed us nothing <laughs> and gave us a lot of opportunities. I, I recently reposted. They gave me ten or fifteen thousand dollars and said, "Can you make four to five sketches for our website?" And I go, "Okay." This was back in 2000, uh, 2013. and I go, "Yeah, I'll make some sketches." And I made a pilot for them, 
and it's it's on my Instagram right now. It's on my YouTube, and it's they didn't have to give me anything. Yeah. This was post victorious. They didn't have to do, but they're like, let's let's give him some. Let's see let's see what he can do. So the fact they gave you three pilots for Nickelodeon, well, yeah. they, they <laughs> saw something in you. Even if it didn't go, that's like that's impressive. Oh, for three. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the history of the pilots is I did one, and then they gave it to two other kids to host instead of me, and they got off the network pretty quickly. And then uh, was it one... Bucket and Skinner? Were you supposed to be Bucket and Skinner? <laughs> Nobody knows what we're talking I'm, about. What is that? It was just it was a show. <laughs> it was a show. It was a show about two two friends who served. <laughs> Or, uh, yeah, or skated. I don't remember what it was. It was two kids who were in the other show that didn't do very well on Nickelodeon called How to Rock. They were going to host this clip show that I oh, did yeah. the pilot for. And then uh, Nickelodeon developed a sitcom based on my life. Uh, so I did that with them. And then I did a game show for them. You you were on a sitcom? No, we a were, pi- a, the Zach we, Sang pilot? We literally, well, it's written, yeah. They developed oh. it all the way to pilot. We didn't, we, we didn't literally started casting and didn't move forward because the guy who was doing it ended up leaving. Okay. Um, you know him. He was the other half of the two-headed beast that was the Nickelodeon leadership. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, the, I everything you're saying is 100% true because... I learned the most there. I got put into positions that, like, I was not prepared for. They, My story at Nickelodeon is, you know, it's interesting because they hired me mainly to hold me because they wanted to do Nickelodeon radio. And it kept getting delayed and getting delayed and getting delayed. And in order to keep me busy, they said, we're going to try you out on TV and let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. I had never been on fucking camera before in my life, ever. And the first time I was ever on camera was Worldwide Day of Play. Oh, no way. Doing all the coverage. And, uh, yeah, I did it for digital and linear. And, yeah, from there, I ended, yeah, the rest is history. It's, but. yeah, I mean, I, I've now done so many just guest star roles, one-offs, seen how different you know, machines work. You know, I did, um, I don't know, season 14 of Grey's Anatomy and season 11 of Big Bang Theory. And they <laughs> have it down to a science. And it was fascinating just being like, okay, like, when you're that big of an enterprise, like Nickelodeon is, you know, just how smooth that machine can be and how many moving pieces there are and how you organize, Victorious, sometimes like 100 people on set, more. More, I mean. And just how to, I have, you know, an opener, a tour manager, and it's still stressful. Victorious can cost a million dollars a week to shoot. More. Yeah. More. Yeah. I think we did two to three. That's crazy. Per episode. That's insane. And by the way, they were doing an episode a week. And correct me on your schedule. Is it like, Monday run through Tuesday Wednesday like rehearsal Thursday Friday shoot Monday Tuesday rehearsal sometimes they would push it to Tuesday Wednesday rehearsal Thursday Friday shoot definitely when did you table read Monday Monday yeah damn damn I know it was a crazy 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 schedule and by the way like you know seeing people who had there's you know you talk about it running like a well oiled machine there was a lot of people though who had the responsibility of making sure it ran like a well oiled yeah. machine and I remember very vividly this woman who was like my talent handler and I think she worked with you too she'd pick her eyebrows out in front of me so like she was like really stressed oh she was stressed yes I mean I'd be sitting in the car and she'd be picking her eyebrows out yeah we were in the back of a fucking fancy car I do, and like I do the this. travel was arranged I do this I'm constantly just like <laughs> futzing with my cuticles this that's poor, my nervous tick uh, this lady lost her eyebrows in front of me I want to know who it is don't say it on you the... know her so I, I do I just don't know who you're talking about yeah I'll tell you later uh, by the way, you really go see the show. Uh, <laughs> it's an Coming amazing to a city experience. near you. Experience. You gotta come, Dan. I'm gonna come. I really want to. I want to see it. What do you think? I'm hoping maybe like uh, maybe Liz will show up for this one. Yeah, I I would love to see Liz back out there. It was really cool when she came out for you for got, the Georgia show. You just gotta We've understand, had, like Liz has this whole routine ready to go. Right? She's She's orchestrated the entire thing. (laughs) She's coming out as Jade. The towel needs to be right. She's coming out as a janitor first. She came out as a janitor so that she could (laughs) unveil that she was dressed as Jade. It was just so Liz. And then it inspired Avin, who played back on the show, who came out of the New York show, to come out dressed as Tori. (laughs) So he came out in a full wig and a dress. And the audience lost their minds. We've had Andre's grandma. Um, We've had Daniela to a couple of shows. So it's it's like a it's a it's a it's a family reunion. It's so great every time we get the people together. And look, the shows are fun whether we have a guest or not. Yes. But I they the surprise of like, oh my god, it's Trina. But the truth is, you never know who's gonna show up, so you gotta go. Yeah, you never know. That's the fun of it. I would I would like I would like to find a way 
to have somebody at every show. We'll see if we can, but it's it's difficult. Never say never. Never say it could be Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber, Jaden Smith. That I mean, that song goes off. Yeah, it's good. that's a really that's a classic. What Karate other legend le- legend nights are you gonna do? You said um, Miley and Justin so far. Yeah, you know, there's uh, Selena always goes off. Demi always goes off, and there there's certain songs, especially in Demi's catalog, that I really like to like La La Land. But she's sort of the, her first single, I believe, that she then mm. kind of moved away from that sound. It's very Paramore influenced. I would love to do more stuff like that. Um, uh, do a little like Big Time Rush section. Ooh. I think it'd be really you can fun. Get people them out there. People request. Um, I haven't seen any of them in like over ten years. So oh. I wonder if I just DM'd them if oh. they would even know who. Remember, let's make another note. Let's reintroduce Matt Bennett to Big Time Rush. Also, Gustavo <laughs> Rock. I'm sure he's not doing much. Gustavo, is that their uh, manager? Yeah, that's the fake manager on the show. He'll show up. Um, that's uh, Stephen Kramer Glickman. Yes. Yeah. yeah, nice. That's good. I'll invite him. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I saw I was out um, uh, striking at uh, the Disney lot, and I walked up, and I immediately saw Eric Lang oh, played Psychowitz. Icon. I know. And he's great in Weeds. He's he, on Weeds? No, what is he in? What the fuck did I see him in? He was- Perry Mason? No. no. Escape from Dana Mora? No, he was in something and he was incredible. Lost. Yeah, he was great in Lost, but it was great. something else. Oh. Fuck. Seabiscuit or Secretariat or something? I know he's in a horse movie. <laughs> Seabiscuit? He's in either that or Secretariat. It's one of those as like an announcer. I miss Narcos. Seabiscuit. Oh, maybe it is Narcos. Yeah, it is Narcos. That makes sense. Damn. Yeah, he's an Drugs. <sighs> Seabiscuit. Yeah. Narcos is what? Cocaine? Yeah. Weeds is weed. Weed, yeah. <laughs> so close. <I> know. <laughs> yeah. Weed. Just, uh, same family. Go see Party 101. Uh, I'm really happy that you are doing this. And also you have a new brand and you're uh, It's you're cool. Free. You know, it's, I think there's a lot that you can do, especially with the 101. You know, I, we're bringing it back to the basics. It's, I, I kind of say at the show, like, like we're, you know, like we're back in school. I kind of frame it. That's how I've been framing the show is like tonight we're going to bring back to the basics. We're going back to school. Can we pretend like tonight we're back in high school, but not just any high school. Cause I'm looking out at the crowd and I see a lot of talented people and I'm pleased to announce that tonight you have all just been accepted into Hollywood arts and everyone goes, ah, and I go, and if you guys are students at Hollywood arts, I have the pictures behind me. And I go, then that makes me your psychowitz. And I put up psychowitz and I go, but I wouldn't be a good psychowitz if I didn't come prepared. So I have a coconut. And every show I have a coconut. I get a coconut for every single show. And I say, whoever parties the hardest tonight gets to take the coconut home. And people lose their minds. <laughs> Everybody wants the coconut. And I'm watching. We are watching. We're seeing who's partying the hardest. So if you want the fucking coconut, get out there. And party. Shake yourself. It helps if you dress up in a costume. You know, if I see the Blonde Squad or a Psychowitz wow. or a Jade, a lot of people dress up as Jade. <laughs> it's always funny because afterwards I'll, I'll I'll hang out and sign autographs and take pictures and meet them and I can always go like can I guess your favorite character from Victorious and they go okay and I go is it Jane and they go how did you know and I go because you're dressed like her <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing it's pretty funny this makes me very happy it's cool man it's cool you'll have to come I mean if oh. you want to be the celebrity guest at any show why don't, why don't you come to uh where are we going that's gonna be fun you tell me I'll go Columbia South Carolina sure <laughs> when is it. Uh, the seventeenth. Well, we'll we're work supposed it. to be in North Carolina. We are for a wedding on the twenty sixth. How far north is North Carolina for, compared to South? I really don't know how that works. I'll give it a Google okay. though. Okay, I don't have a compass. Does it? Uh, how does it make you feel knowing that you're listed on the website for uh, Massapequa Park? <laughs> Did you know that you're, you're listed uh, yeah. as some of the most famous people who are from there? Yeah, I just got eclipsed. Yeah, you, well, you're you're on there with Neil Diamond. Yeah, no, but do you know Jerry Seinfeld? They just caught. The Gilgo Beach murderer. You know uh, oh, yeah. My hometown <laughs> is now Park. famous because there was a serial killer living there who was murdering people from 2010 on. And we're like, you know, on Long Island, it was a famous thing. Like, oh, yeah, the Gilgo Beach murderer. He's not, he wasn't, he didn't live close to me, but it's the same town. So now it's going to be. I know where he lives. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. So it's Jerry Seinfeld, Alec Baldwin, Neil Diamond, Matt Bennett, and the Gilgo Beach murderer. The Gilgo Beach murderer. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Like, it's it is company. funny. Yeah. Being a Long Island guy and being like, oh, really? <laughs> somehow it makes sense. Some, somehow he lived in between the uh, the reservoir and the Sunrise Mall. And it's just like, yeah, that's sort of the no man's land. I wouldn't go up that area. <laughs> a and that's place where, where a serial killer would 100%. 
reside. Yeah. It it just it kind of makes sense. You know what? It makes sense. You're going to see Party 101. Carlos Cameron is going to be there, right? Yeah. I can feel it. Woot woot. Buy your tickets, please. Final thoughts? No, I did just see on Instagram, though, you did carpool karaoke before James Corden, so he copied you. Something like that. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if he copied me or if it's just like a good idea. Everybody sings in their car. This was back in 2011. I was like, I asked a friend who wanted to make a video, and I was like, can it? Can you just film me doing karaoke in my car and just singing along to my favorite songs? And um, it was a cool video. And then, yeah, flash forward two or three years, and James Corden is like, oh, it, look at me. I'm going <laughs> to sing karaoke with Seth MacFarlane. And it's, <laughs> all right. I mean, like, I couldn't get Seth. I couldn't get Seth MacFarlane. No, no. Yeah, but you did say, you <laughs> I did, did get, get in this caption, though. You have an unreleased second episode with Victoria's cast. Yeah, uh, Victoria Justice definitely did it. I think, I don't know if it was Liz. Somebody else from the cast did it with me. And we were going to put it out, and then we just forgot, lost interest, moved on, had other things to do. There's a lot of great moments like that from back in the day that just live somewhere on someone's phone. Yeah. Can you release it, or are you not allowed to? Do you have to get Victoria's? Oh, opinion? no. I mean, I just, we don't have enough footage. We mm. we did it, I, like, multiple friends over the course of one day. I don't think we did enough Damn. to put out a full video. Maybe. He needs to keep the context intact, and the art needs to be delivered the way you intended it to be delivered. You know, it, it just, it would be a minute of a video. Which maybe that's all that you need. That's really, Especially with like, TikTok. Yeah. Or is it also not enough? No, I, I think know. a minute these days is like the perfect amount. Let the man just write his vision. I, I will say I can see the analytics on how long people watch my stuff. And I think a minute's being generous. I think you got to keep it down <laughs> to 15 to 30 seconds. <laughs> I think that, I mean, me too. Me too. If I think about how I look at TikTok, somebody be like, okay, this is the craziest story. If you don't tell me the crazy story... In the next 15 seconds, I'm moving on. <laughs> if you don't get to the meat of the thing. So there I was out in the park and I'm just laying on a blanket. I'm like, nope, I don't care. I don't know. I get it. A bear could have eaten your arm off and I'd be like, you lost me at laying on a blanket. Now your fingers and eyes had other things to do. Yeah. Matt, you did post something on the internet in like 2017. That's oh, not You're going to talk about it? <laughs> what did I do? The very last line after watching, I was like, the very last line is, all you really needed. Oh, I want to fuck a demon. <laughs> there it is. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> no, I mean like it was a really, I'm always trying. That was a, Fred Bennett. My father gave me a very nice compliment and he's, he's a very stern man. He doesn't give a lot of compliments, but he's like, I noticed that you've never stopped trying and it's, it's very impressive to me. And I That's go, really <gasps> compliment from my father this is so this is so meaningful but yeah like i uh, you know whether it be i for a while i was like i want to model in japan that was my idea i was like i i was going over there regularly and they have vending machines with tommy lee jones on them he's the face of their coffee this is a long i'm, I'm giving you the i'm digressing yeah. right now i'm going a long story um i was like i want to be the face of this bottled coffee tommy lee jones is their mascot I, I should do that. I want to try that. So the monologue you're talking about, I was watching, I was on, uh, on YouTube and I was watching all of these influencers who couldn't string a coherent sentence together. There'd be <laughs> jump cuts in the middle of every sentence. And I'm just like, God, this has got to be so, so time consuming. Just cutting, so, you know, like cutting this video, cutting your thoughts together. It's like, what if I just wrote a monologue and delivered it? And at the time, like, I don't know if you guys are saying, when you think about a bad memory, some people just go, ah, you know, like rats or, oh, darn it, or huh? shit or whatever, you know, like, but I, I speak in sentences when I think about that. I go, I want to fuck a demon. Like, <laughs> I think I, did, I got it from Liz probably. That's something, that sounds like something Liz would do. <laughs> yeah. God, I want to fuck a demon. And I was like, what's that impulse? Why am I going there in my head? Why is that what I say? So I wrote it into a monologue where it's just <laughs> me describing what it would, what I think it would be like if I had sex with a demon. And it did really well. It got half a million views. It's currently on private because I, I sent <laughs> it's currently on private. Um, I was manager shopping and one person was like, you got it. no, either be monologue guy or, you know, like I, I they were like, there's something else. Try something else. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> but I don't know. You didn't stop trying though. I never stopped trying. I was like, what, what is that? What is this impulse in me? Can, can I, string a coherent set like monologue together. And I did a couple and I thought it was really fun. Uh, really interesting. It was like, how do you, it was like another, it was an audition almost. I was like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm 
just like that I can act. I don't know. So people can see like, oh, he, he can do other stuff too. He can make his own videos. He can write, you know, that was a five minute monologue that I wrote myself. Fuck yeah. That was the idea. Listen, I, I tried a lot of things before I was like, maybe DJing. Once again, nobody told me to do any yeah, of but this. You are an incredible Nicola, actor, Matt. When, you when shouldn't I, like ever forget I that. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true because- Oh, that's bullshit. You're well, really going to say that? I would like to try more. I've taken a lot of acting classes. I'm always going back to the drawing board. I, I love going back to 101. Good. I love try. I've taken a lot. I've, I've studied Stella Adler and Meisner. I've studied Commedia dell'arte. I've done improv classes. I've done singing classes. I like to constantly go back to the drawing board and re, you know, try and recontextualize wh who I am, where I'm at, what I've learned up until this point. Knowledge is valuable. Yeah. You, you so, want to keep growing. And you never know. Somebody's Somebody else's approach to the same problem might be drastically different. So I'm always just like, all right, let's try monologues. I was really into this guy, Eric Bogosian. I was really into Spalding Gray, who were these like stereotypical, you know, m black T-shirt, black jeans, Jewish monologists, <laughs> just like griping in New York in the 80s. You know, it, it, Eric Bogosian in particular would do characters. And, you know, he would come out and be like, man, I'm this guy. And then, no, well, now I'm this guy. And it was, I was like, I want to try that. It'd be kind of weird. And what 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 is in me? Yeah, but it still worked. Half a million people watched it. Yeah. And then I took yeah, but now it's on private. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll put it back up. I I I sometimes wrestle back and forth in whether everything should be available all the time. No. Because I think it's a well. There's good things from it, but there's also bad. So, I I liked. I was also toying with the idea of like, what if I made my own content scarce? What if you know like, it'll it'll be up for a week and then it's down. What happens then? Will people watch it? Will they actually watch it? Or will they do what I always do where they keep it open in a tab yeah, and they get yeah. to for, for two weeks and then go, eh, you know, I actually don't want to watch this anymore. Because I do I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Even if it's an important video, like you need to know this about climate change. I'll be like, I, I, I will get to it. You know what? <laughs> Give me three weeks. Give me three weeks. <laughs> you can stop climate change tomorrow. Uh, I'll get to it next week. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That's so true. I have like 20 tabs open now. I'm like, I'm probably not going to watch any of these. No, ever. I, you know, I've been messing with AI because it, it's fascinating, and I have so many tabs open about different AI software, and I just, I'm never going to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Go see Matt B on the road. Matt Bennett. He's bringing a party 101 to you. Link in the description below, please. Go, go, go. Click, click, click. What are you thinking, Daniel? The one last question I had is, mm -hmm. is the success of the DJing, does that give you more freedom in the future? Because you're not just like, what's next, what's next? Like, you have something that's, like, there? Yeah, certainly. Um, it's We're living in very uncertain times yeah. for every industry. So this is just, even even if DJing, if it all goes away tomorrow, the what it's shown me about myself um, is just invaluable. And I think that I I've I've now found in myself the potential mm -hmm. to keep moving. You know, I once I don't like tooting my own horn, but like I've now done it twice. And there's no reason why it should have worked in the first place. There's no reason why I should have been on Victorious. I was just like I'm glad I was. It was so lucky, but my parents aren't in, in the entertainment industry. I didn't come from a lot of money. I was just like right guy, right place, right time and and you have you know, talent. I, you got to give yourself more credit. Well, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate that. But, you know, it it took a long time. I, I'd gotten to a place around 2019 where I'm like, I think that was the ride. I was I was looking back and I go, okay, you know, I, I did the best I could. I, I achieved more than most people ever do in their lifetime. And I, I got to a place where I'm like, I'm okay with this. And then the pandemic hit. And it was really just like, something's got to give. Something's got to change. You know, what what else can I do? What else can I bring to the table? And I'd always felt really strong. I honestly thought I was going to be DJing vinyl because I've been collecting records since I was 17. And I started live streaming me doing, you know, different sets. On Twitch. Yeah, on Twitch. You know, I would do anything from, this is not a vinyl set, but I would do like, I did a stream that was all kids bop. <laughs> I would do all the kids bop versions. And it's fascinating because some of them are not bad. Most of them are terrible. <laughs> um, I did one live stream that I want to bring back. I love this idea. Um, you have Emo Night. Well, I did Emo Afternoon, which is all of the acoustic versions. That's great. Because I realized that all of the singles for every single song that we liked had the acoustic version as well. The live acoustic version from, you know, KEXP Studios, yeah, totally. you know, recorded 2011. So I did a set where, you know, to be played at a luncheon. And then at the end of every 
every, every show, I'd be like, what do you guys want to hear? And overwhelmingly, they'd be like, victorious songs, <laughs> victorious. And I'm like, cool. And I'm down. Frankly, the songs are really good. Yeah. The songs really stand up. I love getting to come out on stage, be like, BFB. And they go, BFB, my best friend's brother, my <laughs> best friend's brother. It's, re- it's hard not to smile while getting to do that. So, yeah, I mean, like, I went back to the drawing board, and I was like, I think I could be good at DJing. I think it could be really, could be really fun. I didn't expect to DJ for more than, you know, the satellite crowd, which was like 300 people. I'm now on stage in front of, like, thousands of people a weekend. And we're doing the Palladium in L.A.? we're doing the Palladium and then Australia. So we haven't announced it yet, but that's probably the next move. Huge. Probably the next move. Go but, freak you know. the freak out at Party 101. Link Please. in the description below. That's fucking amazing, man. I'm so happy and Great. proud of you. Thank you so much. Billy, you should be so proud of yourself. I'm, and I'm, I'm happy and proud of you for everything that you've accomplished. Um, like we said, there's been so many iterations of the Zach Sang show. It's amazing that you keep going and that you get people like, I mean, you've moved past the teen crowd. You had Neil Young on this couch. Yeah, he, right there. You had Billy Corgan. You had Adam Duritz. You, you knew we just who, had? Who'd you have? Slipknot. No, you didn't. Yeah, yes, Corey true. Taylor. Man, that's so, like... It's been fascinating watching your trajectory as well. It keeps getting better. I mean, like, like a fine wine. <laughs> we're, we're getting better as we get older. No, it makes me so. Oh, you're, you know, very kind of you, and it makes me emotional because I think, you know, I think you can relate to this. When you do something for so long, I think the fear of staying somewhat relevant or mattering to the next generation of people who come through mm-hmm. is very much weighs heavy on you. And yeah, I mean, you know, we started on the internet, and then we went to. Nickelodeon, and then we went to FM radio in like the biggest way possible. Yeah, nobody still has been bigger than us at FM radio since we left. Uh, that's crazy. And then to come here and do digital again has been, yeah, such a fucking wild journey. And to remain somewhat relevant and to matter to anybody for this long, you know, even one person well, is amazing. Yeah, you know, there's, I I'm I love this little like niche that you know like we're we're transcending it. We're you know we're building off of it but you know it's i i feel seen but the fact that like when i was in ninth grade high school musical and hannah montana were it my favorite albums were american idiot hannah montana to meet miley cyrus <laughs> and like some weird lou reed album like i i had i contained some weird multitudes in my head i was all over the place but like there really was something special about the time that we went through and it's cool that we get to build on that legacy now. Fuck yeah. In our own, in very unique ways. And it's happening. It's, cool. it's, you built up so many skills over the year that, yeah, now you can in- interview people like Neil Young. And it's it's compelling. I've listened to them because like, I like Neil. I saw Neil Young live. I love the Counting Crows. I love the Smashing Pumpkins. Mm-hmm. And it's just. Billy was a great guest. Good guy too. He's a, yeah. He's Good very, guess. he's been very open over the years. Crazy. <laughs> but he's, hey, yeah. But Neil's really special too, man. Like that. You know, to get that phone call from him, like, that's unlike anything He reached else. out to you. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the wild thing. Yeah. That's <laughs> insane. Usually we beg. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. You gotta. Go. Go see Party 101, please. There's gonna be a link in the description below, and you never know. I may show up at a stop, so. Neil Young go. may be there, too. That would be wild. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Seriously, well, go, go you party. Never know, you never know, because still to this day, the biggest reaction that we got <laughs> was in Anaheim. When Andre's grandma came out, <laughs> she was in nine episodes, maybe, of that show as just like a cameo. They lost their minds yeah. like it was the Beatles reuniting. Like it was Ariana. I don't think Ariana could have gotten louder <laughs> screams. <laughs> it was Andre's grandma and people are losing their minds. Go. And Go. it's just, I, it, I don't think I've been happier. Like that was one of the highlights of my life. Because, and the other thing is like, I've now gotten close to Marilyn who plays yeah. Andre's grandma, Marilyn Harris. She's so weird. And I mean that because as a weird person myself, like we start talking about music and I'm like, do we have the same taste in music? The 60 year old lady and her husband, like they love craft work and they love the Buckethead. These are real weird, obscure. I mean, craft work is very famous, but like Buckethead, you, you might know him from Guitar Hero 3 or 4 <laughs> as one of the boss battles. He's a guy who wears a uh, like a hockey mask and a Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket on his head. And she's like, yeah, we go see him all the time. Because what brought it up was she brought um, dog toys with her uh. to, the, to the show in Anaheim. And she's like, I'm going to throw them into the crowd. And I go, okay, great. What was the inspiration behind that? She goes, Buckethead does it. And I go, 
do go on. <laughs> you like Buckethead? <laughs> I can't believe it. I, w- I want to see a concert with her so bad. I want to party it up with Andre's grandma. That's really, But that's special, too. You're learning so many new things about the people who consumed what you, you, you were creating, and then you're learning new things about the people you created it with. Yeah. And that's... I mean, it's been fat. Like I said, I ran into Eric Lang. He was like, the second I got to the Disney lot to strike, he was just standing right there. And it was great catching up with him because he's, man, I remember when we first started the show being like, who's going to play Psychowitz and be told like, we got somebody, we got somebody good. And they brought in Eric Lang and we we're all like, whoa, I this know. guy is next level good. He's so, he's so funny. He's so talented. And that character is, you know, I can't see anybody else doing it, but Eric. And then now to see, his growth, you know, he uh, escaped from Danamora, yeah. which Ben Stiller directed, was excellent. He was on Perry Mason, which I have not watched yet, but I'm excited to. And it's just, you know, I've I've been so lucky to work with a lot of these people over the years. And now you relive it in a whole new way, and you reimagine it, and you bring it to life in a whole yeah, new way. We we're cel- really it's well. not reliving, we're celebrating it. Fuck yeah, we're celebrating how far we've all come because this is all of our story. Click the link now. Be a part of it. Be a part of the community. Link in the description below. You good, Dan? Yep. Hello. Matt Bennett, I love you. Love you too, buddy. Matt and Dan, Bennett. I love you. I love you. You did it. <laughs> Matt Bennett, everybody. Woo! Thank you for having me. You're the best. <laughs>